everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with something uh, very special in many ways. Uh, the first way, um, Biddy, as she puts it, called me out in her video, and I don't think she did that at all. Um, I was honored that she thought of me to help with this drive, and I think it's a wonderful drive. Um, we have tragedies that go on and sometimes I myself, I sit back and say, what can I do? And when I ask myself that, it's both how can I relieve my stress, my anxiety, my sorrow, um, my hurt, and at the same time do something. I think of Biddy Penny has come up with that with a card drive. Now, we always have disclaimers, so here they are. This is not a monetary drive. Um, I'm sure there are other agencies available where if you want to donate money to this community, you certainly can. This is also not political. We all have our thoughts, we all have our opinions on these tragedies when they occur. This is not the time for that. So please keep that in mind. This is a time for us card makers to create, to continue to be creative and make cards. Biddy has opened up and Biddy Penny, her name is Toby. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say Toby. Some of you know her. I will make sure that the link to her YouTube channel is down below. It's a wonderful channel. It's very freeing. You know, lots of lives where she's just creating and she's talking and she explains what she does. And of course, she is on some, de some design teams. So I encourage you to check her channel out and show her some kindness and subscribe. She has opened up her home because she's going to probably have to build an extension. Um, and she is going to gather all of these cards. So as these these slides that you're seeing as they come across, they have information. Um, they have her information and where you should send it to her P.O. box. She is located in Texas. And what really pulled on her heart is she is extremely close to where this tragedy occurred. This was her way to spread the kindness and spread joy because that is what she is truly about. I've had the pleasure of speaking with her recently and through this campaign, her heart is this way on an everyday basis. She's always looking for ways to support people and to help people and to inspire them. So I think she hit the head on the nail with this one. We have until May 25th until July 1st to make these cards. So we've got plenty of time. And this is for any card maker. I'm going to show you three techniques that are quick, simple, and easy to create your cards. If you just want to send a card to somebody in this community to say, thinking of you, you're strong, our prayers, hugs, and anything that you can come up with. Whether you just have pattern paper or whether you have inks, I will show you three different ways to create these cards in no time. And then at the time, I will show you all of them. I'll come in in the beginning and explain the technique. And then after that, I will just play music and you can just sit back and watch and enjoy. Grab that coffee, take some notes or have fun just creating knowing that you're going to be a part and become a part of a community that's in need. Okay, so let's get started. And we are going to start off with simplicity, using our pattern paper and letting it do the work for us. Okay, so first up, as I said, is simplicity. This is where you can take a six by six pad, an eight by eight, a 12 by 12, whatever size that you may have, or maybe you have scraps that are sitting in your room and you just don't know what to do. Create your card fronts. And this is basic. 
This started it, all of this craft when it comes to paper crafting. Here, I'm showing you how I break down the, the uh, paper pad that I use. Now, I always pull out one sheet of every design first. I sort them out to solid, busy, not so busy, or smaller prints to just something different. And then I start pulling out the solid cardstocks that I have, cutting those down. Now, I don't measure. I do not measure when I do this. Um, I just have fun. Just cut your shapes. They can be strips. They can be rectangles. They can be squares. If you do have dies, cut out circles. Whatever it is, you can have fun with this. Now, what I will tell you is all of these cards that I'm making in today's video are standard A2 size, which means they're four and a quarter by five and a half. And believe it or not, they are side folding. Usually I say top folding for those of you that have been here before, but I found some paper and it was already cut that way. So that's what we went with. Absolutely. Let's use what we have. This is not about buying anything new. This is about the technique. Use what you have in your stash. So when it comes to this, I know that my card base is this side. I know the solid background that comes next, that first mat, is cut four to five and a quarter. I know the pattern paper that sits on that is three and three quarters by five. So you can take that note for that. But guys, truly, I do not measure. Have fun with it. If you have to measure, that's fine. The piece that's going to come down into the bottom corner measures three by four, and its met measures three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So have fun with it. All I'm doing now are just cutting my pieces. What do I want to be the backdrop? What do I want to be on the front? That's the only thing that I am deciding. Throughout this video, you're going to see me where I lay down those backgrounds and I just start laying down, throwing down all of those different pieces. Remember, a paper pad is meant to go together. It is designed to go together. The colors may not look right, but there is a reason why this paper pad has been put together. All warm colors, all cool colors, all bright colors. It will match no matter what you match with what. That's the beauty of it. It takes that thought process out of it. Just like the pattern paper takes the thought process and we can let that do the work for us. From this paper, bat, paper pad, I got 20 cards just from doing this. I'm going to let you sit back and watch and I'll turn on some music for you and I'll be back when we get to the next technique.
The next technique I want to show is ink smushing. We're going to use two colors. Okay, now I am using Distress inks and they are water reactive. So there are some key elements. What I want you to take notice, now in this one I'm using speckled egg and walnut. But again, use any colors that you have. Use, you must use a dye ink that is water reactive. So any inks that are water reactive, use. So you can see I'm putting it in an arc, so to speak. It's, it's, got a, it's going to have a formation, all right, or it's going to be put on a certain section of the paper. Now, the paper that I'm using is Canson XL watercolor paper. It is my go-to for ink smushing, of course, for watercolors. When I'm using a lot of water, this is what I'm going to use. When you're using two colors, after you've put your first color on and you want to start with your lightest, your second color, you must dry your panels in between. You must dry your panel in between. I'm taking a blue gray and a dark brown. When these two mix, when they're both wet, it's going to create more mud, more brown. I want to be able to see the blue and I want to be able to see the brown. So drying in between, just like I'm doing here, is key. Absolute key. Here comes my darker color. Now, again, remember, all the products that I'm using, I'm not linking them down below. That's not what this video is. Now, if you have a question, put it in the comment and I will get back to you. Okay, so just keep that in mind as well. So you can see after we added that brown, we just have it again in a certain area. It's creating this arc. Again, that is the beauty of ink smushing. You can control it, not much, but you can control where it does go on your card based on the card's position. I'm going to do this multiple times, okay? There are I think three, one, two, three, but there are four versions of these colors that I have put together. So you're going to see me put the colors down. You're going to see me dry the panels. You're going to see the next color come in. You're going to see some drying and then moving on to the next one. I'll be back for what we do on top of these. That makes it very quick. And again, dig into your stash for these. And yes, you are seeing me wiping up some ink from my um, craft mat there, please know it's due to the fact that I am filming and um, just having that time to film. Okay? I'll be right back at you. Enjoy the music.
we have these beautiful and gorgeous ink smushed backgrounds, what do we do with them? Grab those large stamps, those large images, maybe even a background stamp. That would work great as well. And we're going to stamp right over these. The images that I chose were these large florals um, that I have. I've, I'm a floral girl. I love florals because my pencils get very happy. My color pencils, water pencils, they start doing a jig. And because they know at one day they're going to come out and color these. But what do we do when we have these, when we don't want to color, when we want to create beautiful cards quickly? Stamp with them. Stamp with them. Now I'm using uh, my Distress Oxides. They are a dye and a hybrid mix, which me or dye and a pigment ink mix. So I'm so sorry about that. So dye, pigment, mix, which means they will take longer to dry. Okay. And you have time to stamp it, pick it up and put your embossing powder over it. The embossing powder that I'm using is by Wow, and it dries matte. It is a clear matte. I didn't want anything shiny. I just wanted this image there. For some of these images, I'm going to use black soot. And for the other image, some of the other images, I'm going to use a hickory smoke. So something soft, even though it's black soot, it's still soft when it comes to the distress oxide. You're going to see how I position these images. And then you'll see, ah, oh, that's why she has her ink smushing that way. Ah, oh, that's why she went into that corner. And again, because I had an idea of how they were going to be placed. So again, sit back and enjoy. And I'll be right back.
are not an ink smusher, you don't like to ink smush, or maybe you don't have inks, ink pads, oh, that doesn't stop us. So continuing with those large stamped images, what I'm doing here, again, I'm still working on my Canson XL watercolor paper, and I have these beautiful images here, and I'm just stamping them along the side of these panels. Now, these Canson XL watercolor uh, panels are one sheet, and then it's quartered, so they measure four and a half by six, which will give me room to stamp, ink them up, and then cut them down, however I'm working with that to decide what this placement is going to look like. So once we're done this, I'll be back with what we do next. Grab your coloring devices. For this, again, to mass produce, and you can see as I'm putting these together, it's, it's in a production style. I'm doing all of my die cutting. I'm doing all of my ink smushing. I'm, or in the simplicity, I did my die cutting, did my layering, got the panels done. Ink smushing, did all the ink smushing. Then I did the stamping on top of that heat set. Now I did my stamping. Now I'm ready to add my color. So it's all in a production style. And that is what really helps you to save time. I grabbed my Crayola watercolors. I love these watercolors. I think these are great. I think they are great to start out with if you want to try watercolor. Create a rainbow. Because it's great because they already have the rainbow going across. Yes. So I grabbed one of my Ranger brushes. It's the quarter inch um, flat. And I'm just coming in with that rainbow. No, I did not tape my panels down. I don't. It all depends, unless I'm doing a huge wash on this panel. I just don't. I'm lazy. I'm a lazy crafter. I want to get there and do what I want to do. It's okay if this buckles. I can flatten it out. And it will. Your paper will. Now, because I'm just adding the rainbow up and down this image. I'm testing out what this is going to look like. So I have this coming out. I always, when I do something like this, I always have a water bottle near me, a spray bottle. And here we go. I'm coming in with that spray bottle and I'm spraying that edge on the right hand side to the panel that's on the right and to the left of the panel that's on the left so that I can smooth out that harsh line. I don't want it to end there. I love it when watercolors move and drip and, and splatter. I just love that look. Maybe that's the vintage style in me, but I do love it. We can make it bright and beautiful by just making it a rainbow. It doesn't always have to be with vintage photo and those deep, dark colors, even though that's awesome looking. But we can put a rainbow and bring a smile to somebody's trying time. And that's what this whole process is about. To have fun. Dig in. And get creative. And have fun creating what you love to do for somebody else. You can see here I switched over to one. And we're just swishing through with those. I finally got my rhythm. When it, when it happened here, once I have those colors down, I'm coming in with that spray bottle. I'm tapping it on my table. I'm cleaning it up, and the next panel is going to come in. So I'll be back when we look at all of these cards and when I show you the sentiments and how I hold those.
are all the sentiments. So I did mass stamping, 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 <laughs> mass stamping, dug through my stash to find inspirational sentiments, uplifting sentiments, um, sentiment, sentiments to show someone that we're thinking about them or that they are in my thoughts and prayers. Did huge amounts of stamping, cut them out. Now, when I cut them out, I didn't have the dies, so I just cut squares around them. You know, got them in my trimmer and just went to town. I love to have a black border when I have a black, a white background and a black sentiment. So I'm just placing these on my scrap pieces of black cardstock and cutting around them. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, just enjoy the process. And I use my long scissors for that. This was the next thing that I did. I took all of these sentiments, got them backed onto the black cardstock. Now there were two um, sentiments that I die cut it. Um, one says sending smiles and the other one says hugs. You can see here, I'm just laying them all out um, so that you can see the different ones um, that I've chosen uh, when it comes to the cards. And I also chose one, I have one that's hugs with a thick black background. So I stamped that a bunch of times and I just had to cut around that. And then you can see the die cuts. So I did that next. I took care of all of those next so that I could just lay my cards out and just add the sentiments to what I wanted to do. Here are the cards that we made. Take the techniques that I showed you. If you want to be involved, um, I know Toby would love um, to see your cards. Please know this, she will screen them. She will look at them. Um, she will just page through. Um, you can make cards any size um, that will fit in an envelope. And when you do send your card, she is asking that you do send envelopes along with them. That will help her out. Make your cards for all ages. Um, cards that are uplifting, supportive, you can write a message with your first name or family name and or state and country. Don't put your phone number, don't put all of your personal information in there, but you can also leave the cards blank. All right, and that's what I'm going to choose to do. Try not to use glitter. You can see I only used watercolors and inks and stuff like that. So try not to have too much loose things that could possibly happen only because sometimes people with issues can't handle glitter. So you want to make sure, um, please do not include any political notes. Cannot stress that enough. Don't include your address or contact information. And remember, this is not a monetary. So you do not need to send any money and please don't send any money. You're going to send everything to Biddy, AKA Toby, and by all means, you can see on the long, the bottom of the screen, while I filmed this, there is her, the website that you can go to. When you go to that website, she has put a, uh, another page on her blog specifically for this. And everything that I've just spoken of is there. It's a PDF that you can download. And I will have that linked down below. So I encourage you to, um, Print that down so that you can have everything in front of you, which are times, her information to mail them to. If you have any questions, she's added some frequently asked questions there as well. So make sure you do check that out. Spread it to your friends. Maybe you're part of a group that just gets together and scrapbooks and make cards. This would be something great. Again, if you want to, please join us. We would love um, to have you be part of this. I thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do hope you like the techniques. Maybe you'll use them in your card making, but remember, dig into your stash. Um, that is what's important. And that's what will help you. Something like this will get through your stash, get rid of your broken heart. Your maybe you are having anxiety or you just don't know what you, you can do. Here it is. Everyone, have a great day. Enjoy. Smile. Enjoy the time with friends and family and especially enjoy the time in your crafty space when you're able to create your art. But always remember, and it's still most important to me, 
always, be creative, guys. Take care, and I'll talk to you in the next one.